Well, it's a Friday morning here on AM Show. My name is Benedict Hoos. We've got sports to talk about. And obviously, we're going into a weekend where this very weekend, we see one of uh, five matches in the uh, uh, Ghana Premier League where uh, the first round will come to an end on the international scene. Chelsea could win the English Premier League this very... Uh, to, that's tonight. They could win the English Premier League tonight uh, when they come up against West Bromwich. I'll be on and also will do what happened in the UEFA Europa League. The Manchester United survived a late scare uh, to progress to the finals uh, where they will meet Ajax Amsterdam. We'll catch, uh, you know, highlights of what happened last night in the UEFA Europa League. But on the local scene, I made mention of the Ghana Premier League. We'll have match day 15. And obviously, the attention will be on Kumase Asante Kotoko. They've got a new manager, Steve Pollack. He'll be hoping uh, to end the club's uh, winless run. They've played eight games so far and they haven't won any game and it's really disturbing for the Kumasiya Sante Kotoko followers this weekend they come up against Tema Youth at the Baba Stadium that is going to be the first game for Steve Pollack well we're going to do more analysis on what's been happening to Kumasiya Sante Kotoko in the course of the season they started very well and that coach Drafko Logarosic at some points they were leading the Premier League table they were second at some point and the fans thought that the goals were not coming and that they didn't want Drafko Logarosic the Krat to stay they went to the Adako Jache to protest and management also acted on that and sacked the coach well since then they haven't won any game well this morning we are privileged to have uh, on the show via Skype former management member of the club that's a uh, Dr. Kwame Ba Miyako said thanks so much for joining us here on the M show first of all I mean, what's your assessment of what has happened to Kumasi Asante Kotoko so far this season? Well, I must say that uh, it's a, a case of uh, people looking for solutions where no problems existed. Uh, in the first place, uh, they had a coach at the beginning of the season that he didn't even do pre-season with them. So obviously, it would have taken him some weeks or months to be able to even understand the quality of players he has and what they are strengths and weaknesses were. But uh, in that situation, I could understand his the way he was doing stuff, i.e. trying to make sure that you don't concede too many. You build from the back. And Kumasi Asantikoro at that time was difficult, very difficult to beat. Mm -hmm. And like you said in your introduction, uh, Koto was around the second position and probably uh, had conceded the least number of goals. And But then supporters started complaining that they were not playing beautiful football. And um, I thought the management uh, pressed the panic button by uh, sacking the coach. And since then, as you said, it's not been all rosy because any new coach that joins the team during, especially in the first half of the season, where players have not, they themselves have not uh, developed the right um, uh, coordinations. Any coach that joins will struggle. And I'm not surprised that since he left, uh, the, the team has struggled. Uh, and we, we can only hope that uh, things get better. I, I'm not normally a, somebody who is pessimistic when it comes to teams and mm. uh, their positions at the, at the end of the first round. The problem is not where you are. It is what plans you have of getting out of there. It wouldn't be the first time that Kumasiya Santiago has gotten to that low level in terms of position. I don't think any position is uh, low, but of course, relative to Kotoko's history, it is. But uh, some some years back, I remember uh, the early days of Dr. K. Sapon's administration. Kotoko mm -hmm. lost about six matches in succession. Um, once again, the issue then was how do you get out of that? So being able to determine what is the real problem uh, is the solution. And I, I think the management needs to sit down. It's not always about coaches, I, I must say. Mm. Now, Drafko left. They brought in, uh, you know, from Paul Manson to help. Things still didn't go well. Now they've brought Steve Pollack. You feel that's the solution to the problem? Well, it goes back to the issue of instability. I mean, whatever caused uh, uh, Luga to be sacked and whatever uh, caused Frimpo Manson to be sacked, has that thing changed? So if Pollack comes in and those problems still persist, what happens? Is it because... You know, I hope you understand my Yes, idea. I do. If you don't identify what is causing the coaches to fail, Mm -hmm. Because if you keep changing coaches, it means there's something uh, basically wrong with the team that is making every coach that comes in fail. I think the management need to sit down and do a, a good assessment. Uh, the quality of players, yes, they have some very good players there, but I don't think it is up to the strength of you know the Premier League in terms of uh, winning the league. I mm -hmm. think they need to do a bit more. 
Uh, the, the the end of the first round gives them an opportunity to look for other players. It ha so th th my point is that it might go beyond the coaches. Maybe the quality of players is not up to the level of Kumasi Asante Kora. There are a lot of very good players within the squad, uh, but I still think they need strengthening in a couple of positions. And so if they don't do that and they keep changing coaches, I don't think you are getting the solution. And secondly, uh, Polak will succeed depending on the kind of support he gets from management and, of course, the support base. I was surprised that management uh, decided to sack uh, Luga just because supporters are saying he's not playing good football. The question is, what targets were he, was he set? Was he set a target of winning matches and making sure he's on top of the table or he was set a target of playing beautiful football? I, I was very surprised that that decision was taken. And so if uh, Pulak is also not going to get the support and that any time the supporters cry for our management is going to sack them. But I don't think that that's the way to build Kumasi Asante Doc, from where I sit, it looks like uh, there is a communication gap between management and supporters. Management are not communicating to the supporters the way forward of the team. At, at, at the point that we are in now, you realize that things are not really going well. Management haven't said anything to the supporters in terms of maybe, I mean, things are not going well, so we shouldn't even look at winning the league. Is that what you see? Well, as, as, a, as a manager, you cannot behave like a fan. Of course, obviously, almost everybody who has become a Kotoko management member before was at one stage a fan of the club. But once you, you are given the job as a manager, you, you cease to be a fan, an ordinary fan. Of course, you remain a fan, but you are no longer an ordinary fan. You have more information than the supporters do have. Of course, you communicate a lot more with the coaches. And of course, you also know the targets that you set the coach. And that target should be well communicated to the supporters. Of course, at one stage, um, Mr. Herbert Mensah came to Kumasi Asante, for instance, and made us all believe that uh, the team had gotten to a level that needed rebuilding. It took him about three years to uh, do that. He didn't win any title, but Kotoko supporters were always hopeful. I think it is important for the management to let the supporters know what your targets are, what targets are you setting for this year. Are we still thinking about winning the, the Premier League? Probably looking at where we are and the quality of players we have. That might probably be a, a target too high for the coach. But if the coach also accepts, the management says, we want you to win the league, and he says, okay, I can win you the league, then obviously uh, the supporters will be expecting the league title. And so if you don't perform and you don't get the league title, uh, the supporters will have every right to call for your sacking. But I still believe that they need to give Steve Pollard the time set realistic targets, communicate those targets to the support base. And cultural supporters are patient enough to appreciate the level where they are, uh, the team has gone to. And of course, we also need stability in management as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think that chopping and changing has helped Kotoko grow uh, to the extent that it, it, it has a potential to do. Mm. Doc, well said. But briefly, I mean, the sensitive matter that we all shy away from is uh, the ownership of, of, of the team, uh, the uh, patron, that's uh, Otun Fawcett to the second. I mean, m many have expressed the, the view that the problem is not with management, it's not with the players, but it's from the top. And the top, obviously, Doc, you know what, what I'm referring to, since you've been a management member of uh, the team before. Is that what you also see? Well, for me, I, I have, uh, I'm a student of the game, and I've read several models of ownership of football clubs. And I don't believe the ownership structure really matters. Uh, let, let's let's go to Chelsea. Chelsea Football Club is owned by one person, <laughs> uh, uh, Abramovich. Abramovich. Yeah. But Chelsea is winning the Premier League. It's won Champions League, isn't it? Yeah. It is not about who owns the club or the structure of ownership. It's about the management, who is appointed into management, and the capabilities, and of course, the knowledge about the game of the people actually run the game. So for me, if we are talking about the challenges Koto have faced, yes, I admit that the chopping and changing has had an effect on the performance of the game. Chopping and changing both at the management level and at the coaching level. Uh, but it is not about who owns the club. There are so many ownership models. The, uh, Barcelona and, uh, has uh, the fan ownership model. If you come to England, there are different other models where two or three people own it or even one person. And all of them are performing. So I don't think it's about who owns the club. Is about the people who are then appointed into management and the kind of choices that they make over time. So uh, if we, we really want to talk about the problems Koto has had over time, let's sit down and talk about who is appointed into management, what, is our, what are his capabilities, 
what was the, the target that the person was set? What did he achieve? And why was the person, for instance, changed? Maybe we also need to also indicate that stability, whether it's at the playing body level, the coaching level, at the management level, is good for any organization. And I don't think Otofo has had enough of that over time. But, but look, has he made the right choices in terms of uh, those he, he has appointed into management positions at the club? Well, the, fa the fact that the, the fact that uh, Kotoho has not got into the levels that everybody believes has the potential to get to means that the, the choices that we've made have always not, not always been right. And of course, that will include the choices we've made in terms of who becomes managers of the club, and then the choices that the managers have also made in, in terms of who becomes the coach, the coach and how long the, the coach is allowed to stay. And of course, the choices that the coaches have made, for instance, in terms of which players that, that are brought in and who is played at which position. So it's uh, it's not just, it's a stakeholder issue. Mm. You need to look at all the stakeholders of the club, the choices that they've made over time. And everybody needs to accept part of the blame for the fortunes of Kumasi Asantikoto. And finally, before I take leave of you now, Steve Polak is in. He's starting uh, his first uh, game against the uh, Tema Youth uh, this very Sunday. You feel that they have what it takes. If probably management, as you are saying, should uh, do things right, Kotoko can uh, still get into the top level uh, by close of the season? Well, uh, let, me, let me remind you, in the 2010 football season, like the, the example I gave, Masia Santoro, when Dr. K.K. Sapon took over, uh, somewhere along the line, the first one, we lost about six uh, matches on the trot. Changes were made. New players were brought in. Mm -hmm. Kotoko finished second at the end of the season. So yeah. it means that the first round, you know, it's not, it's an indication of what you can do, but it, it, it doesn't define everything. And the difference between Kotoko and the top team is what, nine points? Nine points is, you know, it's just few games. Not too much for any team to overhaul in 16 games. And so I think, given the right environment to work, Steve Polak or whoever is brought in as coach of Kumasi Asante, right? I don't know the kind of uh, technical structure they are going to build. Who is going to be his assistant? Is he bringing his own people or he's keeping the people who are around him who have some experience? And of course, it has its own limitations as well. It depends on the kind of support. I've said it already that mm -hmm. the management gives to the coach. Bringing a new coach in itself doesn't guarantee you results. It's yeah. the kind of support and the tools that you give to the coach. And of course, the supporters also need to be patient. There's no guarantee that Steve Polak will win the game against the Mayu. There are only three possibilities, a win, a draw, a loss. It is possible Steve Polak will lose his first game. I'm not saying that he's going to lose because I wish he wins that match to give the supporters some confidence. And that will, going into the break, will, will do a lot of good to the playing body. And of course, it will encourage other players from other clubs to, to also want to join Kumasi Asante. It's a critical game, but there's no guarantee that he will win. If he, for instance, loses that match, it doesn't mean that he's a bad coach. And so the supporters and the management will have to give him the chance. To the extent that they felt that he's good enough to come and coach Kotoko, it meant that they've seen what he's doing elsewhere, meaning that given the chance and the right tools to work with, he will be able to succeed. But, you know, expecting him to win his first three matches, for instance, probably is uh, too high a target to set. Mm. And the supporters need to understand that. But losing his first match doesn't make him a bad coach. And yeah. he wouldn't be the first coach to have lost his first match and gone on to succeed. I wish him well. I wish the management and the playing body well because I'm also still a supporter of the club. I'm a fan. I check results. I go to the stadium to watch matches. I can only wish them well. But I'm saying we need to give the coach and the technical team and the management the breathing space to be able to put things right. Once again, my final word is that it's not about where you are, it's about the plans that you have. They should tell us what plans they have of moving Kotoko from where it is currently. Mm. And we'll all support them any day, any time. And I can even see you in your Kotoko shirt. Thanks so much, Yeah, Dr. maybe I need to show you that. I'm wearing my old Jacko. Yeah. Uh, this, this, right. this Jacko top. Uh, it looks very nice on you. Thanks so much, uh, Doc, for joining us this morning. Uh, we thank you. Uh, for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was a former management member of Kumasi Asante Kotoko, Kwame Banwako, uh, speaking to us on a variety of issues uh, regarding the club, how uh, they, they started this season, the uh, sacking of uh, Dravko Logarosic, and also the appointment of Steve Polak, and he plays his first game, uh, I mean, uh, as a Kotoko manager.
on Sunday with Tema Youth at the Babara Stadium. But Ghana Premier League, the Kotoko Tema Youth game is one of many matches that will be played this very weekend. That is actually starting on Saturday, so it will be on your screen pretty surely. And Wafa will start it off uh, with Interlice at the Suga Kope Park. Uh, that's tomorrow, and we'll have Beijing United uh, will be at home at the Beijing Park to Indiana Stars. Also, Chelsea, Brecum Chelsea will be at the Brecum Golden City Park to play against Accra Gold Olympics and Asante Kotoko Tema Youth at the Barbara Stadium. Ashanti Gold, while All Stars will be at the Obuasa Link Clay Stadium, Kuisiki Akono will be hoping to get his first win since taking charge of the team. And Liberty, Accra Hearts of Folk, the big one, of course, will be at the Dansuman Karindov Park. Boga All Stars, Media Mercy will be in Tamale. And we have Elmina Sharks Dwarfs, uh, Seloko Derby, Regional Derby, yeah, because uh, Elmina uh, will be in Elmina, the Indum Park, to play against the Busan Dwarfs.